All right, good morning, Council's Industry Parties. We're back on the record in the matter of uh, State of Georgia versus Cleef Adams et al. in 22 SC 183572. Let me go ahead and take roll. Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Sharp, good morning. All right, Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, and Mr. Adams, good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Weinstein, good morning. All right, Mr. Huey and Mr. Matthews Sr., good morning. All right, Mr. Nichols and Mr. Harvey, good morning, sir. And Mr. Ryan and Misty Williams, good morning. All right. Um, 
Messrs. Brown and Smith, and uh, Ms. Love and Mr. Atkins. Good morning. All right. All right, our jury is not present today. way of housekeeping before we get to the main matter at hand. Uh, I received an email from Ms. Love, two emails this morning. First one was regard to the witness list that we're going to talk about in just a minute, along with an email, which I'll mark as the next court's exhibit in order, which uh, references a YouTube link um, and may be used uh, later to um, in the current examination of Ms. Archell and Bennett. I'll mark that as the next court's exhibit. And then also the next court's exhibit will also be another email that's sent by Ms. Love to all of you at 11.25. Um, well, that's the last night, I should say. I'm sorry. Um, at 11.25 p.m., which references or summarizes the conversation she had involving... Mr. D'Angelo White. Not I, Your Honor. It was Mr. Atkins, but it's the same sub. Okay. Sub All right. So that's marked as next course exhibit in order. All right. And then, um, so to the matter at hand this morning, uh, the state's witness list. So how many witnesses do you have on this current list? I'm, and it is enumerated from pages 1 through 12. I'll make that as the next court's exhibit in order uh, for, for, the, uh, for the purposes of our discussions. Your Honor, inclusive of um, two names that were erroneously numbered twice, there are 209 persons on that list. There were a few persons who were added as a result of testimony that has come about over the past week. Um, regarding um, regarding witness statements made in the presence of um, investigators and other personnel with the district attorney's office that we have included on here. These are people that we did not <coughs> we had no intention initially <coughs> of calling in our case in chief with the exception of <coughs> anyone who's previously been listed on the <clears throat> witness list prior to now. For instance, um, Chief Investigator Randolph has already testified. We did not intend to call him back, uh, except that the witness has made... Uh, the witness whom are you referring to Ms. in Bennett. terms of the witness? All right, Ms. Bennett, okay. She made statements um, to me... Ms. Bennett made statements um, in the presence of not only myself, I was never um, by myself when I spoke with her. So the persons who are listed that are somewhat new, Ms. Dolzreas, I asked Ms. Bennett about the tall advocate um, with curly hair that spoke with her when she <coughs> indicated that she did not wish to speak with me outside in the hallway. Um, Lieutenant um, Baker, Hamilton, Randolph, and victim witness advocate Kelly are all persons that... What's Miss Kelly's first name? Tamika, T-A-M-E-K-A. -A. She's number 63. They are all listed. Those people that I just named are all listed on page three of the list that we have provided to your honor and to counsel for the defendants. And they are after crime scene technician Montgomery Porter.
Okay, so the first 56 you have on this list are witnesses we've called already? Yes. I know we'll still so be examining Ms. Um, Bennett and Mr. I should say the retired Detective Quinn. Yes. So what's your what's your um, your net number of witnesses that you are planning to call? That are remaining? They're remaining, yes ma'am. One hundred and fifty three. All right, and um, this one hundred and fifty three witnesses, you still believe in contend it's going to take one hundred and twenty trial days? Judge, what we did on our list is we gave a gross um, estimation based on the length of time that we have had to take with certain witnesses, um, factoring in both states direct, anticipated cross, and averaging out the way that certain witnesses such as Mr. Stevens, Ms. Bennett, Mr. Bean have gone in the length of time that they've taken and applying that, uh, uh, overlaying that analysis um, over other similarly situated persons, our very, very, very rough estimate. Um, can we shut the door back there, if you wouldn't mind, please? I apologize, Your Honor, I didn't no, hear No, uh, could we shut the door behind you? There's uh, sound is caring, that's all. Thank you. <clears throat> Factoring in the... Um, All right, so, yeah, for example, so for Acts 5 through 7, if I'm reading your time correct, correctly, you're saying it's going to take us from April the 8th to April the 10th. Yes, that's okay. exactly how we've listed. Uh, and that's your gross estimate. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Um, then the next series of witnesses from April the April 9th to April the 11th. Yes. And then so on. Yes. Okay. All right. And the longest ones, the court will notice, are two homicides that are on the list on our indictment. Um, those are the acts that we anticipate will take the longest amount of time to... Okay. Has all of the uh, discovery been tendered in respect to these acts that you are um, you're proposing on these particular dates? I understand these are gross estimations of how long it will take. So, um, and I apologize, Your Honor, I did not hear the court's full question. I, I, and, I, and, my, and my thought was not complete. So, um, <coughs> have you turned over or tendered to make sure that your, that the Discovery that matches these particular um, witnesses has been turned over already. Yes, Judge. We we you scrubbed that again, and have you met with defense counsel, or have you have you are you assured that you, that all of the documents that are turned over have been turned over that are responsive to these witnesses? And what I'm asking is so that when the witness is called. And like I said before, if we have a situation where where that document has not been tendered or you can't tell me when it was given to the defense, if you tell me, I, we gave it to the defense on February 15th and, and it's in the same form, and they tell me, well, we haven't seen this, well, then we're just going to go forward. But if not, I, like I said, that's when I'm going to exercise several other options. 
So, um, are you sure of that? Are you sure that you've tendered everything? I'm, I'm fairly certain, and Judge, what we've been doing is prior to each of the acts, what we've been doing is sending over our exhibit list along with the witnesses that we intend to call for the upcoming weeks. So we will continue to do that. And if there was an oversight error or omission, not with respect to turning it over, but with respect to just alerting defense, we'll be using this exhibit in this act or with this witness that I believe should cure uh, any concern with respect to those issues. Cause that's what we, I believe that that's what we have continued, that's what we've done, and that's what oh. we will continue to do. <laughs> the challenge that we've had is that defense counsel either says that they have not received that, okay, or uh, it's an augmentation of something you gave them. So, that, for example, the discovery you gave them may have had 15 pages. Now it has 25. It's more complete. Or, as I mentioned a couple of days, you know, yesterday, that, you found something the night before uh, from an Instagram search or whatever else of a particular witness and you wish to use that. So that's what kind of, and then with the defendants, if you're going to, you know, you need to be able to kind of state with particularity the, of what the state has not given you and or I'm going to start asking why it hasn't been reduced to writing because the older that or the more you've had the particular evidence, or the discovery, I should say, um, the more I'm probably just going to go forward. So Is your um, honor certainly I'm subject to, of course, exceptions. Does your honor mean, for instance, reducing prosecutors' conversations with witnesses to writing? Or No, like no, 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 ma'am. No, no, no. I'm what I'm finding is, like, for example, last week we had some telephone calls that I had, and I had to go through with you all that Mr. Steele brought up. The text messages? The phone, the fo some, in terms of, I think it was with Mr. Mr. Bean, we had the universe of maybe about, you know, you all have told me you have hundreds and hundreds of calls, but relative to this particular period, you had about 10 calls that, that were relative to, to the inquiry at hand. Right. Well, two of them hadn't been gone through already, and I had to take up those in front, you know, while the jury was sitting in a box. I'm, we, I'm not going to do that again. So what I'm saying to you is if you haven't turned those, all those over or the defense hasn't filed a motion in respect to that, we're going to go forward. Your Honor, what we had done with those 10 calls, as the court I'm sure is aware at this point, we had turned over the 10 calls. We had spoken with defense about which ones we intended to use. We had, since before December, we had identified and Ms. Hilton was able to actually locate the email wherein she told the defendants that we are using these, all of these jail calls right here. Okay, but there were objections as to those jail calls. And I can't take those, I can't take those up while the jury's sitting in the box. Right. And that's what I'm saying to you is my remedy start going to be start, is going to start being to exclude those calls because I'm just not going to have, because we've had, we've had sufficient time to do that. So unless somebody files a motion or puts me on notice, Remember I told you, happy judge, forewarned judge, happy judge, because then I don't have to take it up and, and have our jurors wait. I mean, and I'm not saying in any way I'm trying to limit your ability to present your case to either side, but what I am going to start kind of enforcing pretty draconian in, in, in measure will be if you don't, if you, if you all don't forecast the problems or issues you're going to have, then we're not, I'm just going to, I'm just going to exclude it you're because I think that we've gone far enough down the road that you all are seasoned enough advocates. So if you know, for example, you're going to use five calls and the defense either has told you, Hey, if they don't bring up something and they bring it up the last minute, I'm going to, my remedy is to exclude it. Your Honor, the problem is, is that we had, with those 10 calls, not only served them, not only announced that we were playing them, not only announced that we were playing all of them, but we had repeatedly asked from the defense, what portions do you object to? So we had satisfied all of our statutory obligations. We had even satisfied beyond that because mm -hmm. we repeatedly requested of counsel for the defendants 
which ones, which parts do you object to? And it was not until, and in fact, a motion in limine was filed as to one, but it was not until we tendered the calls that we had previously provided that the objection was made. So, Your Honor, we would, of course, object to exclusion of evidence. I'm going to want to see that you had the conversation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let you finish. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, of course, it's subject to the reasonable test, meaning that if you sent them, if you sent the defense convers, you know, had conversations with them about it and nothing, nothing happened, well, then I'm not taking it up if you got, if, if, if it wasn't dealt with. Because somebody, like I said, I'm in no way saying don't try your case or don't bring problems, bring challenges up to me so I can resolve them. I'm just kind of at a point right now where it's like, look, I can't keep taking it up in front of the jury. I got to be able to kind of deal with it in a more timely manner. Both of you all, have, both sides have to allow me to do that. It's, it's just not fair. It's not fair to this jury. We're going to have them here well into 26 if we don't, if we don't do that. So you can see my, see, you know, see my, you know, soon frustration in the sense that you all know what's coming up. Both sides, I'm going to add, you know, I said, look, I mean, we can take a down day or whatever else and resolve some issues. That's fine. But that's kind of where I stand at this point in time. So do you understand what I'm referring I, to, Ms. I, I, I mean, Ms. Love? Okay. I, I All right. So, Your Honor. And we will continue and we will copy the court so that there is no question. There's no doubt about what we have provided when we are providing it, when we are announcing that we will be utilizing it. We will... Um, continue providing in advance of putting the information before the um, tendering the information, the exhibits that we intend to utilize with the particular witnesses. And we will in inquire whether there are objections. Um, we will do that so that it is um, announced to not only the court and counsel for the defendants, but so that the court is aware that there is no um, matter that we will be putting before them for the very first time um, when we do it with the witness so that the court will, would not be automatically inclined to think it's something that they haven't seen. We have had instances where we've been informed that certain discovery was not had um, by counsel for one or more defendants. And we've had to go all the way back to uh, June of 2022 in the first discovery um, that was served to show where it was. So we have had instances um, of those type of things happening, but beyond having found something very recently, we have not introduced or tendered anything that we have not previously provided to the defendants. The court made us very uh, aware that we had obligations that we were to fulfill by certain deadlines and we adhere to those and we will continue to adhere to the court's directive. But there are no, there, none of, I don't believe that the delays that have been, um, that have been, um, that have come up during the course of the presentation of the state's case have had anything to do with the state um, oh, there's, like I told you yesterday, Ms. Love, they're blamed to go around on everybody, okay? I'm, I'm just, I, that's why I didn't really need any argument yesterday. I really didn't, because I've sat here. <coughs> so, um, I, I'm not casting aspersions on everybody. Like I said, I want everybody to do better. And if you don't do better, I'm telling you, I got five remedies, okay? So, and you heard the remedies yesterday. I'm going to put them in an administrative order. But I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you as I'm sitting here right now, they were not enacted for me to be punitive or draconian to anybody, but I have the I have the right and manner and and uh, obligation to control this trial. And right now, it's not going smoothly. So, Your Honor, may I address something that uh, the state has brought up? Uh, the state just made a representation that when they provided us the witness list, as this court ordered previously, that along with that witness list, they've been providing us with a list of exhibits. That's false. Uh, in the short time since that was stated about 10 minutes ago, I went back and looked at the witness lists that we were given on 
January 7th, February 9th, February 16th, February 23rd, February 25th, March 15th, and March 25th. And while we were provided that list, list of witnesses as ordered by the court, and I believe that the state was following the court's orders, uh, those witness lists did not include lists of exhibits. Since she has made that representation, I would love to see that going forward. If we could get a list of the exhibits that they plan on presenting, along with which witnesses they'll be using those with, I think that that would certainly make this a more efficient process, Your Honor. Your Honor, if Mr. Weinstein was looking only in the emails with the list and not in other emails, he may have overlooked what the state has provided, but I am quite certain that we have provided in advance of our showing or tendering these witness, these exhibits, we have provided them to counsel for the defendants. And I can go through our emails and find those emails where we've done that. that that's great, Your Honor. If that's the case, I'm more than happy to hear it. And I would look forward to that going forward as well. And maybe if those were coupled with when we received the witness list, we would get um, a spreadsheet with that list along with the exhibits that are going along with the witnesses. We could look at those exhibits in advance and maybe be better prepared to make this a more streamlined process. And Your Honor, we have provided more spreadsheets than we could ever hope to get. Um, and Your Honor, we don't intend to catalog, again, um, catalog our list. We did that initially with the acts that we intended to present, the witnesses that we intended to present per act when we provided the witness information. I'm certain counsel has resources available to do that for them, but we do not intend to do any more cataloging for the defendants. I'm not asking them to do any more than they've already represented to the court that they have done. If you go back and look at the transcript from today, you will see that the state has said that when they provide those witness lists, they also provide a list of the exhibits that the witnesses you will You did say that, Ms. Well. And I mean so. that, Your Honor, but I do not intend to go and provide spreadsheets. We will do it as we have been doing, which is providing emails that contain the witnesses and separate emails that contain the exhibits that we intend to introduce. Well, why can't, we you, not... why can't you do both? Why can't, why can't you just make it simple? I mean, at this point in because, time... Because, Judge, it's just that we are not... We have no problem providing what we are intending to present We've done that and we'll continue to do it. But judge, this idea that we are the legal uh, assistance and personal assistance of counsels for the defendants not saying, who are required not, to not, put this in a spreadsheet and present They're not it to saying them. that, madam They're not saying that. But the problem, the problem we're having is that you are identifying, or you're not, I'm sorry, whether or not you are or not, but I'm gonna deal with that in just a second. Um, the problem is that you may think that you identified some evidence and you haven't. That evidence get filed, that evidence gets is, is about to be tendered, or they're looking at it and they're like, "Well, this is the first we've seen of this," and well, that's what they're alleging, Miss Love. I'm not saying that's true, okay? But that's what they're saying, and they're telling it. They're telling you, or Mr. Weinstein's telling you, if you marry the the act of wit, the witness and the evidence you plan on using, because this point in time, like I said, there is not. There's no surprise. Your, your, pre, your, your elected district attorney tried a gazillion cases in front of me. She turned over an entire file to the defendants. And, she, and her mantra was, if you can beat me with my file, then you deserve to win. Or if you can't, well, I deserve to lose. At this point in time, turn over everything. There should, be, there, should be no, there should be no surprises at this point in time with, ident with identifying evidence and everything else that goes along with it. So... What I'm going to do is two things. I want you to, I want you to catalog these particular. I want you to, for each act that, and ban that you are going to, you're going to present. I like you to add the evidence you're going to call. I want you to, because that, because here's the thing: what will happen is, one, if they have an objection, they can put it in writing or they can file it early, and I can go ahead and do with it. Like I said, and if they don't. Or you say, well, they say, well, we didn't give that to you. We provided that particular document to you in discovery on March the 15th. So you should have it already. At this point in time. You're saying just add to the list that we've already given you the exhibits we intend to. I want you to add the exhibits you're going to present to this particular spreadsheet. Will that suffice, Mr. Okay. Mr. Weinstein? Thank you, Your Honor. And also. Stand by the process. 
it might streamline the process because the challenge we're having is that bless you counsel for the defendants are saying this is the first time I've seen this document or we haven't gotten this document it hasn't been provided in discovery or it's a supplementation of the original document you gave them, meaning that they got it on that date, but instead of the document being 15 pages, it's 45 because it's complete. So that's why I'm saying that it causes them a little bit of, of anxiousness in terms of trying to be prepared. So, and it'll just, it'll just further validate or verify, okay, we gave you everything and it lessens the amount of time I got to spend resolving these particular issues. Like I said, you all are more than capable and I, and I'll give you the time and effort, but it needs to be better presented and packaged. And so. Your Honor, uh, we can do that. And with respect to the exhibits or evidence, um, I don't anticipate that we will be getting, um, premature objections to certain things before we <coughs> had the opportunity to lay a foundation. I could foresee us saying that we're going to introduce 12 exhibits for Act 29 and, and the defense objecting to it as you know hearsay, foundational or something before we've even had an opportunity. Well, I'm going to require them to put it in writing. I mean, so but if you do this now, they'll be able to they'll be able to look at it and they'll be able to determine, "A, do I have all the university documents I need?" and then two, what are the objections on it? Because I can't ferret them out and I don't think it's fair to the jury or anybody else for us to be sitting here while I do that. I I am not. I'm not going to do it anymore. The the remedy at this point in time, I think of any for any appellate or I could exclude it and, and abuse of discretion is, is my, is my grading mark stick. So at this point in time, if you want to make sure that you get all your evidence that at least, at least in the sense that it is, it, it is looked at or ruled upon by this court, they need to make sure that they have all of it so they can go ahead and do that. Now, if you've turned it over and, uh, it's now, this period of time and they haven't filed a motion, then I'm going to, I'm just going to continue at this point in time. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to rule the objection. We're going to go on. We're going to go forward because then they had the time and they, and you, and you told it to them, you gave it to them. So I, I'm just telling you at this point in time, or like I said, I'm going to suck up your weekends. If it's that important, then we'll come in on the weekends and we'll resolve it. And I've already checked with the sheriff. And uh, we can do that, and that will not be a problem. So I'm not looking to do that because that takes my weekend up and my time off, along with my staff and everybody else. But I have got to get this thing moving, and we've got to be smoother and better, you know, as advocates in order to do that. So I, you know, I know that many of you may be annoyed, but hey. Do better. So, um, Ms. Love, when can you augment this list? Can you augment it by tomorrow? No, Your Honor. When can you do it by? You should have a handle on every piece of evidence you probably have. You we probably do. Have. We, it's, the court is asking for something very specific, and so I'm. I, our resources, we would use them to give them to the court. Um, for instance, for next week, uh, we could have those done for the next two weeks. We could have those done. By when? Tomorrow? By judge at the court. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm going to be great. But if the court, um, you got us up, you need by tomorrow, then that's what we do. But your honor, we, we, we'd ask that we not be required to, um, go through and, with respect to all of the acts. Ms. Love, you must act like I, I, I was never a trial advocate. I know you all have this stuff together already. And if you don't, I, I, I'd, be highly, I'd be highly shocked. You probably have all this stuff together already. I mean, so just, just, just put it on paper and give it out so we can go ahead and go forward. It is not giving your trial strategy. The facts are the, what the facts are. I'm just are. Mr. S and Mr. Sharp, you find something funny with what I just said? Okay, all right. I'm not doing anything abnormal. Just sitting here listening and paying attention. 
Okay. All right. So in that respect, there's nothing that should be a surprise at this point in time. Friday morning, that's when I want it. You, we already have a, we have a motion to uh, Friday morning by 10 o'clock. I want to see it. Yes. No, actually, I, actually, no, because you all have off on Friday. So that's why I want it Thursday now. I want it Thursday because I want to take up your motion. I told you I'd at least give you a day. Um, and um, that's why I want it Friday morning. That's why I want it Thursday morning. So I'm going to listen to your motion, the motion to disqualify, and I'm going to make sure the next two weeks of, uh, that means all the witnesses you plan on calling by the 19th of April. I'm also requiring that all counsel um, copy myself and Mr. Kearns, Ms. Weaver, and me on future correspondence going forward. So I wanted, I wanted to just see what is being sent to each other in turn to satisfy the court's directives as to evidence. And I want it sent, sent, you know, piecemeal, Ms. Love. I want it sent, you know, at this point in time. What? I, I, in the future going forward, okay, I would like it to be sent, you know, where you do the same thing you're doing with, with the, the court's exhibit or the augmentation of your witness list, okay? I want to be able to see what witness you're calling, what act, and the evidence that goes along with it. Okay. Okay. All right. Any defense counsel have any have any comment at this point in time? Let me care cover Mr. Um, Mr. Matthews. Anything you wish to add? Disagree with about the court's uh, instructions? So I'm looking for suggestions at this point in time, Mr. Weinstein. Uh, Ms. D. Williams. Mr. Harvey. Mr. Sharp. I believe that you share this opinion, Your Honor, but I just want to be clear um, regarding recordings. We, as I've stated, there are probably thousands of recordings. I'm pretty certain Your Honor does not wish to have us, and quite honestly, I'm, I don't want to do this, um, go through every recording and file particularized motions for every recording and discovery. But I'm not going to do it in front of a jury like we've been doing for. No, I understand. I'm not doing that anymore. I understand. but I'm Okay, so uh, what is that incumbent upon you to do then? Well, I'm going to reiterate the fact that we, I completely understand that you want to be forewarned about issues. <coughs> I'm just going to reiterate uh, reality that unless the – the plan is to have us go through thousands and thousands and write thousands and thousands of particularized motions. We do need the pared down, and I believe that's what the state's saying, but I'm just reiterating. We're going to need the pared down list ahead of time when they seek to introduce recordings so we can file in a timely manner those particularized motions for those recordings. Because to just file particularized motions for every recording and discovery would just be to cast a net that is way too wide and it would not be time efficient for anyone. Okay, but you all know now the, I mean, even though you have thousands of recordings, you do have an idea which recordings are, are relevant for a particular witness or a particular period, correct? I, do, I would not agree to that. We have. Why not at this point in time? Well, because there's thousands of recordings. Okay, but I, I, focus, okay? The, fo the thing I'm asking you at this point in time, if you know, for example, witness X is going to be called, Yes. And you pretty much know at this point in time, there may be 15 to 20 recordings that are relative to that particular witness. It, it are you won't. telling me that you, you true or not true? Is, is that? I, 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 no, I don't believe that's true. That why would you say that's not true then? Because that's why I'm saying in a, in a timely manner, and I'm not even suggesting that the state hasn't done this. I'm just trying to bring this to the court's attention. And it's, we need those specific recordings that the state plans to use to be identified to, to narrow the net, then we can file our particularized motions in a timely manner. So, so it, unless the state identifies them, you can't, 
you haven't looked at them in terms of the terms of that particular time period or that particular witnesses um, recordings? As, as your honor has pointed out, this is a RICO conspiracy. There's thousands of calls and I can't believe, I, I don't believe that your honor is saying this, but there's hearsay. For, I'm sorry. There's hearsay. Uh -huh. There's uh, inadmissible, there's third party statements on every single jail call. And I'm, I'm certain that the expectation is not that we file motions on every single call in discovery. And your honor, I, I do not know what calls the state finds particularly relevant versus calls they don't. That's, that they're putting on their case and I cannot forecast their case. Yes, my client, for instance, they sent me, Ms. Hilton sent me five calls in particular regarding my client's uh, calls and out of thousands, probably or hundreds. And I am fully aware of those calls and I'm not gonna dispute that I'm on notice of those calls. All I'm stressing to your honor for the smooth administration is to the extent the state has, that it continues, to the extent that they haven't, that it begins identifying in advance what calls they anticipate using to at least narrow it down so we can focus on the meat of this case instead of oh, I, calls that they've never planned on using. I hold that thought. Yes. Here's here's the challenge, Ms. Lowe. Mr. Sharp may brings up a good point. Say Ms. Hilton gives the five calls, but instead of five calls on the morning, it's eight calls. And they haven't identified or listened to those other three calls. That's what I got to take up. And that's what usually causes the, 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 not, the issue. We've not done that, Judge. And we've not, uh, I'm, I'm going to disagree because that, that's happened on a couple of occasions. But, um, I, I'm just, I, I, that's all I'm saying. Mr. Sharp, do you have anything else? So you want them to keep identifying the the calls and uh, and whatever recordings they wish to do? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for turning your mic. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Um, Adams or 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 Mr. Steele. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Mr. Weinstein? No, Your Honor. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, All right, and in uh, defense counsel, this is, I mean, I know that there's eight terabytes worth of stuff, okay? But that in no way alleviates your responsibilities to, you know, to listen to as much it or to be prepared as much as you can. This should kind of help out in the sense of everybody kind of knows where they are. It should be at least where we're presenting or witnesses. Um, does anybody have any questions or issues with the, uh, with the witnesses that the state has identified. I know that they have identified the, you know, the accident and Your Honor. Sir. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sharp. I would just like to forecast one issue, and I think we need to talk about this at some point before it comes up. I see that it's not scheduled until May, but uh, witness 89, Sammy Davis, I noticed he is on the witness list. Um, he alleges that he was at the scene at the time of the Donovan Thomas uh, shooting. Your Honor has suppressed out of court identifications. I do not anticipate that he will make any in court identifications. Um, but I would like to have a conversation before he testifies with the court about the proposed testimony and 
what your honor would consider fair game without opening any doors by the defense um, to violate or to put in jeopardy your prior ruling. I think that there needs to be a discussion outside the presence of the jury. When did I make that ruling? Uh, I do not have the order. Do you have a copy of the order? Well, send that to Mr. Mr. Um, Kearns and I can take a look at it. Yes, Your Honor. I sent it to everybody but you sent it in, to include Mr. Kearns and myself. Um, going forward, like I said, please include me on, on your correspondence so I can go ahead and at least be, be apprised of um, what, what is being sent uh, or communicated between, uh, between all parties so um, I can be better informed. All right. Other than Mr. Davis. All right. Does anybody else have any other information or, or issues they need to bring to the court in terms of the, uh, the witnesses that have been identified? We're going to add the documents that are, that are, uh, that are to be called. What I'll do is, um, Ms. Logan said you'll provide those by Thursday morning. And then the next, tomorrow. um, that's tomorrow morning. Your Honor. Tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. And I'll, and I'll just, I'll just uh, indicate in my order that every two weeks that that, that, you know, the witnesses as well as the evidence list will be, will be re reprinted or I should say will be disclosed for the next, uh, next two week trial period. Uh, Your Honor, as to, Sir. as to whether any of us have any other issues with the witness list, just speaking for myself, um, as we just received the list 15 minutes before the 11 o'clock start time today, and I in no way mean to um, say anything negative about the state. I'm sure they stayed up quite late putting this together, if not all night. But um, I'm going to need more time to look at this list to see if I have any issues. All right. Well. Judge, this list is, um, is comprised of people with the exception of the ones that I named. That Four or five that you've identified as the same Right. This has been provided. These names have been provided for months, months and months and months and months, I don't maybe see. even a year. So if there are objections to these people, I would I would have I, I would have expected that those objections would have been raised before now with respect to anybody on this list, because this list is a pared down version of the list that your honor has been and we have all been working from for the last several months. And, and Your Honor, I'm not going to, although I haven't looked at this, I'm not going to disagree that this list includes names or comprises names that have already been provided to us. I'll, I'll take the state's representation on that. All I'm saying is, is as far as any of these witnesses being a waste of time or cumulative, I need to really look at this list before I raise any issues with respect to that. And Your Honor, with respect to the defendant's um, opinions about wastes of time and cumulativeness of witnesses, um, I know that the court is aware, and I'm certain counsel for the defendants are aware, that the state alone has the burden of proof and they cannot, the court <coughs> has control over the order and presentation of the evidence. But I would think it quite presumptuous for a defendant to be able to assert to the court when I'm certain he'll argue in the end, they didn't bring you this or they didn't bring you that or there wasn't enough evidence, I would quite find it quite presumptuous to argue that or presume themselves able to tell the state that a witness is cumulative or unnecessary when they will be quick to say and point out the fact of the matter that they do not have a burden of proof. We do, and we intend to meet that burden and they are not able to, I would think, suggest to the court um, their best version, because I'm sure it would be much less than ours, of what witnesses we need to put up to prove what. And Your Honor, if we have two or three witnesses that testify about 
the same set of events, but from various vantage points, in no way could that be considered cumulative when, again, we have the burden of proof. And uh, Mr. Weinstein's version of what's enough, I am quite certain will never equate to what I believe may be enough. Well, I'll, I'll make that decision on a, on a case by case basis. So um, that's, that's part of my role and responsibility. So we, we'll, I'll, I'll take it up as, as it as is presented. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else? All right, um, Ms. Love, by five today, and you know, like I said, please uh, submit a response so I can read it before tomorrow morning. Yes, Your Honor. Um, all right, anything else on the witness list or anything? So we'll update the witness, we'll update the witness and evidence list. I'll, uh, Mr. Kearns and I will work on an administrative order uh, and I will endeavor to enter that tomorrow. And uh, so I will, my goal for tomorrow is just for us to take up this motion to disqualify, and that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Is there anything else I missed? Councils? Yes, Mr. Steele. Um, good afternoon, or good morning. Good afternoon. All right, sir. Your Honor, there is a matter that uh, you'd like to take up with the sound of the court ex parte on a sealed record at the appropriate time today, if you don't mind. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'll take that up and do as soon as we're finished. Okay. Um, all right, anything else, councils? Other than the ex parte matter? All right, if not, I will see everybody tomorrow morning, uh, the 4th of April uh, at... At, for 9 o'clock, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we'll see you then, okay? We're in recess. Thank you, Judge. All right.